Okay, so, guys, maybe this one's a little bit more difficult, right? So, just slow down. Okay, we got two functions here. y equals square root of negative x plus 1. Last class period, what did we learn? We learned that, oh, when we have a function, we want to make sure we write it in this b. We have a b and an h here, right? So what we want to do is rewrite this. y equals the square root of negative x plus 1. We have to factor out that b. Now that we factored out the b, we realize it's being shifted right to 1. Now again, we need to know what the function looks like. Here's the parent function, square root of x. So if that's the parent function, the, transformation, the transformed function is being shifted one unit to the right, and it's re being reflected, because that's b. Remember, b reflects about the y-axis. So the graph looks something like this. Okay. Over here, you have the number 2. How do you graph, like, remember, this is like an equation. y equals 2. How do you graph y equals 2? Horizontal line, right? Just go to where y equals, you know, here's y, y equals 1, y equals 2. Nice little line. Okay? But now to combine these, we got to go by what their domain is. So, or what their restriction is. So, let's do actually, geez, I can't hold a pen. Now, this says, Graph this function, just don't graph it for 0. Everything else is good, just don't do 0. So what do you mean, what should we put at 0 then for that graph? A hole. So graph it just like you did. Was it over 1? And put a nice little hole there. Then it says graph this line 2, but only graph it at one value when x is equal to 0. So when x equals 0, y equals 2. So we have a little hole. And the graph would just look like that. OK? So that is an example of a piecewise function with a hole. We'll do rational equations, rational expressions next, uh, next chapter.